Lesson 6 is titled Fractional Parts and we'll just be working with fractions here and fractions are just another way of thinking about division. For example, if we had this fraction remember in Lesson 2 we learned that we could write that in different ways. We could write 14 with the division symbol in 2 and the, or we could use the long division format all of those represent the same idea of division. Right now though we'll be working with this first one. That's When we think of a fraction that's the form we think of and just keep in mind as we do some problems here that fraction means division. Something else you want to know, you probably already have learned this and you may need to refresh your memory though the top number in a fraction is the numerator the bottom number is the denominator. I know it would be easier if they just called it the top and the bottom, but sometimes in math they use special words so that you won't get them confused with something else. Like top means has a meaning for a lot of different things, but when you hear the word numerator you know that they mean the top number in a fraction and denominator means the bottom number in a fraction. And the top number, the numerator, that is showing the number of things that are being described, like 14 in that fraction, 14 over 2. There's 14 things that we're describing. The denominator, the 2 in 14 over 2, that's the number of parts you want to divide it into, the number of equal parts. So you're wanting to divide 14 into two equal parts. So if you did that, you'd have two sevens, right? So the numerator tells you the number of things being described the denominator tells you how many parts you want to divide that into. Why don't we go ahead and do some different problems with fractional parts now. Look at the circle that I've drawn here. How many parts have I divided that circle up into? Well, the best way to do that would just be to mark them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight equal parts there. Now, what fraction of those are shaded light blue? Well, what you can do is just count them up. There's four of those, and that means four of the eight sections are shaded light blue. And so four-eighths of them, which would also be one-half, that would simplify to one-half, right? We can say one-half are shaded, and let's write it like a number, like we have there. How would you write that? as a word, well you would just write it like this, one half. So let's try that with a couple of other sketches and let's write the fraction of items that are shaded and write it as a numerical value and as a word value as well. So look at this practice problem B. Let's count the items there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three of those are shaded, so the fraction that are shaded would be three sevenths. And we can write that in words as three sevenths. Most of the time you're going to write them as a, num a numerical value, but it's good to be able to know how to write them as words as well. Let's try one more of these. What fraction of those squares are shaded? Well, first see how many squares there are. You count them up and you see that there's 4, 8, 12 squares. 4 of those 12 are shaded, so let's just think about that. 4 over 12, that simplifies to 1 over 3, one-third of the square. So we can write it like that as a numerical value. In words, we would say one-third. One out of every three are shaded. Look at this problem. This is a word problem. You don't need to write the words down. Just figure out what the answer is on these kind and it says what number is half of 16? Well let's just think about what we just did. We did some problems with shading in different 
squares or parts of a circle, things like that. Think if you had 16 squares. How many squares would you have to shade in if you had 16 to get half of them shaded in? That's the same thing as saying what number is half of 16. Well, you'd have to shade in eight of them, right, if you wanted to get half of the 16 squares shaded. So that's one way to think about this problem. Another way to do it is a division problem. You're splitting 16 into two parts, half of 16. So you can think of it like that, too, 16 over 2. And that's just equal to 8. So that's our answer. Look at problem E, another word problem. What number is one-third of 900? So that means you want to split 900 up into three equal parts. We can do division on this again. We can write it like a fraction, 900 over 3. And maybe you can see that that's going to equal 300. If you need to do long division on that to figure it out, you can do that as well. You don't have to if you already understand that. But just in case you don't, get that how 900 over 3 equals 300. Do it this way. 3 goes into 9 three times. So you have 0 there. Bring down a 0. So you'll have another 0 there. 3 goes into 0, 0 times. Bring that down. Bring another 0 down. And then you end up with your 300. And so that's the answer there. 300. One third of 900 is 300. Look at this problem. What number is one-sixth of 24? Well, you're kind of getting in the method of turning these into a division problem, so you know that you would just say, well, 24 over 6. And hopefully you know that one in your head. 24 over 6 is just equal to 4, because you know that 6 times 4 equals 24. And so that's your answer. Let's do a fraction problem with money. How much money is one-fourth of twelve dollars? Well, just think about that. We need to split up twelve dollars into four equal parts. So we can do long division on that if we want to, or we could write it like a fraction. Let's just go ahead and do long division. And we put our decimal point in the same spot. Four goes into twelve three times. Bring down a zero, and so we see that that's just going to be equal to three dollars. How much money is one fourth of twelve dollars? Three dollars is one fourth of twelve dollars, and so that's our answer. Three, and there should be a decimal there. I couldn't see it before. Three point zero zero three dollars and zero cents. Okay, well that's all for lesson six.